Sacred Heart is proud to sponsor Pensacola Histories in recognition of the Daughters of Charity who brought their mission of care to Pensacola over 90 years ago. Hello and welcome to our story of Pensacola, the America, North America's first place city where this week we're talking about the, uh, the story of the Spanish-French confrontation which had begun here late in the 17th century and by the end of the second decade was uh, seeing some sort of success for both the Spanish and the French. And then late in 1718 a new war broke out in, uh, in Europe which became a, a battle basically between the French and the Spanish as to who was going to control both countries. Both of the, uh, both of the men, of course, who were sitting on thrones there were of the Bourbon family. And of course, as they did this, uh, this uh, conflict began to spill over and the English became involved as well. And so, uh, late in the, uh, in the late of the, uh, the 1718, uh, all of the preparations were in, in force and, were and the war was beginning in Europe. But it took several months before word of that conflict reached the New World. By now, of course, Bienville continued to lead the French forces in, B in uh, Biloxi, uh, uh, Mobile, and on Dauphin Island, and now Governor Matamoros was in charge here at what was now being called Pensacola. Word of the war got to the French first, and so in May of that year, uh, Governor Bienville put together a task force of several small ships, a large number of uh, Choctaw Indians, plus the army armed forces that he was able to draw from his three settlements, and they attacked uh, the uh, colony here at Pensacola. Now, Governor Metamorris had no idea that there was a war on, so one morning he was totally surprised to see a French fleet sail past the, uh, the opening to the uh, Pensacola Bay, land just to the east of the new Fort Seguenza that had just been built on the island, and quickly capture that fort. Uh, from that point on, there was a, a rapid but small battle fought. Uh, it was uh, uh, basically between the, the Indians on the west and the, the Spanish, uh, but basically Matamoros quickly saw that he had nowhere near enough manpower to oppose the French force, and so after a short term, they agreed to surrender. And all of the Spanish were gathered together, and after just a, a few hours of consultation, all of the Spanish people here, and in the neighborhood of 750, were put aboard two large French warships, both frigates, very large ships. And the decision was made, the French were going to sail these Spanish back and just leave them off in Cuba. The French, meanwhile, would occupy Pensacola. The two vessels sailed east, and they reached the outskirts of, of, of Havana Harbor, and here, coming out of the harbor, was a large Spanish fleet, which was loaded with manpower and on its way to relieve the siege at St. Augustine, where the English had surrounded the fort and the siege was in progress. Well, the, of course, there was immediate contact and conf confrontation between the French ships and the Spanish, and the Spanish prevailed. They captured the two French frigates, and all of the people were brought into Havana. And now the question among the Spanish was, what do we do? Do we turn around, re re reconfigure our expedition, and go back and recapture Pensacola, or do we go ahead on what we, with what we were going to do and relieve the force at uh, St. Augustine? And after a good discussion, they decided they would go back and recapture Pensacola. So it took, it took days to do this, but they put it all together. The, the first battle had been fought in mid-May, and by early August, the Spanish are ready to return. Meanwhile, at Pensacola, Bienville had been going through all sorts of mental exercise. You'll remember from uh, previous uh, lessons or lectures that from the very beginning, Bienville and his brother Iberville had wanted this site, Pensacola, as the capital of their uh, Gulf area uh, empire or, or colony. And of course, they had backed away because the Spanish were here. Now they had captured it. And Bienville was saying to himself, okay, this is going to be our capital now. So what he did was leave a, a corps of men here, and then he went back and began the work, at least in his own mind, of preparing to move the, the major parts of the other colonies here for administrative purpose. This was going to become the head of this French colonies along the Gulf. Well, meanwhile, of course, uh, the Spanish were coming back, 
And as they came, they, they arrived here on the, uh, on the 16th of uh, August, and the, Fr the French co uh, contingent turned out was very small because most of the troops had been moved back to Mobile. So the, the, again, the, there was a second battle, another very small battle, and very quickly the Spanish prevailed. So now we've had two battles here in a period of about three months, and in each case the visiting force had been successful. And the Spanish were now here, and as, they, of course, now with, with them here, both the French and the Spanish are well aware that there's a, a major war being fought in Europe, and this is now a part of that battleground. So reinforcements begin to come to uh, Bienville in the, on, the, on the west, and additional forces begin to come to assist uh, Matamoros here in Pensacola. And the, all of this is put together very carefully, and the, the French, of course, have the advantage of a, another large fleet that has been diverted from another source and now lands here, and they, they, they dock that fleet on Dauphin Island. This is led, this fleet is led by a man named Chamon, uh, de, de, excuse me, Demos Chamelon. He is a, a high-ranking admiral in the F French force, and he has with him about half a dozen large vessels. And so now, for the next 30 days, everyone begins to pull every kind of reinforcement they can here, knowing that a great battle is going to begin. And the, the French are, are lined up in all three places. They have large numbers of Indian allies. The, uh, the Spanish have a few Indian allies, but not many. But the, they are outnumbered, of course, by considerable. Well, on the morning of September the 18th, the war, the battle begins. At this point in time, uh, uh, Matamoros has a large contingent in Fort Seguenza on uh, Santa Rosa Island. He has uh, the other force in, uh, in uh, Fort, uh, Fort San Carlos. And he takes all of his ships, and you want to make careful note of this. He takes all of his vessels, which include two fairly substantial frigates, and brings them inside Pensacola Bay. And they anchor them so that all of the firing power is directed right at the entrance to the bay, reasoning that as the, as the French attempt to enter, they can put all this firing power, plus what they've got in Fort uh, San Carlos and in Seguenza, in, against any, any invading force. What they don't have, of course, is adequate cannon fire going to the west against any army beginning to attack them from the west. But anyway, about nine o'clock in the morning, here come the French. And of course, the first thing they do was to sail right past the, the entrance of the harbor and about, go about a mile to the east of Fort Seguenza, where they put a sizable army on the ground and they make their attack, not from the west, but from the east. And the, the Spanish, for their, unfortunately for them, are not prepared for this at all. Fort Seguenza falls very quickly. Uh, we come to about 10 o'clock in the morning, and now the tide has risen so that the French feel that the water is deep enough for them to uh, begin an attack coming through the entrance to Pensacola Bay. At the same time, the, the Indian contingent and the other army force led by uh, General or Governor Bienville is moving in from the west. And so at 10 o'clock in the morning, the battle begins. And it is a big one. It goes on back and forth, back and forth, all day long, but one by one, the Spanish vessels are hit and damaged and some of them, one or two of them, managed to get out through the, through the entrance of the bay and flee, but most of the others are either sunk or run aground here in the bay. And the, this is just a personal prediction, but I believe that one day the, our Navy or Dr. Benz and her archaeologists will find the remains of at least one of those Spanish vessels which must have sunk into the waters of the bay during that battle. By, t by four o'clock that afternoon, the situation is grave. Governor Matamoros brings his, uh, his officers together and they agree that f f further fighting is futile. And so they run up the white flag and they surrender. Governor Bienville comes in, they shake hands. They agree that the, uh, the situation was exactly as it should be. The French now are in control. And once again, it is agreed that all of the Spanish who are here will be put on surviving French vessels and carried to a Spanish location. And now the French are in control. And so at this point, uh, Governor Biedville, he's rubbing his hands together. Well, I finally got it. The Spanish are gone. We are going to really make this our capital. At this point, Admiral Chamelon comes along and said, now, son, uh, look at it this way. There have been three battles here, right? That's correct. Who has won in each case, the visiting team or the home team? And Bienville has to admit, well, the visiting team has won each time. And the Admiral said, that's absolutely right. This is not a defensible position unless you have a huge military and naval force here, and it is unlikely that you're ever going to have that. And Bienville so agrees that he's right. 
And so at this point, and this is using very loose terms on how it went, but basically what happened next was this. Bienville agrees that they will vacate Pensacola. And they do, they do. The, all of the force that's there, the military and the others that have come with them, they move back to Mobile and the French literally burn down all that the Spanish had built here. And Pensacola is literally burned to the ground. Uh, the fort is largely dismembered and consequently it is left as a, a barren site. And so the French period, which we talk about in the city of uh, six, six Flags, was really a very short period indeed. Okay, at the end of the war, which comes about about a year later, uh, the, the various sides go to the peace table, and it is agreed that Spain will get Florida back. Now, wh why the French agreed to that, I guess probably that they figured they, they had had it and they didn't want it, so they gave it to, back to Spain, and Spain eagerly accepted it. We move forward two years, and in the early part of 1722, a new Spanish fort force arrives here at Pensacola. Now this time, they don't go to where the Areola colony had been uh, on the present day site of the Naval Air Station. They do not go back to where De Luna had been 180 years before, no. This time, they begin their colony on Santa Rosa Island, about a half a mile east of where Fort Pickens is today, but facing the sound, not the Gulf, but the sound. Now, uh, people often ask the question, now why did they do that? I mean, they, they, uh, they uh, had no water supply, the very little timber out there. That was a, a, a strange place to put a colony. And the answer probably was that these, uh, these uh, new uh, colonists remembered, had a had good word of the Indian attacks with the British that had occurred back in the early part of the uh, last colony. And they re reckoned that if they located on the island, they could not, they were pretty, pretty safe from that kind of attack. And so they began their colony and they put it together. Now, what was this colony? Well, it was a small village, probably never more than 250 people. We know what it looks like because in 1742, an English trader was here and sat on his vessel out in the sound and drew a beautiful picture of that village, which had a, down at the bottom, it had its legend that told us what each building was. And back in uh, 1959, when we had our quadricentennial here, we recreated a version of that village to show what it was like in the, in the 30 year period that it was here. All that, the, these people were there, they were, they were a way station. They were there to help a ship that got into trouble. They were there to, supplies, uh, to get, uh, aid with supplies if they were needed. And, and basically they, they were there to show the Spanish flag more than anything else. They went ahead and they were, they were reasonably successful. We, we know very little about them really, except that in, in 1742, a, another hurricane hit the area, badly damaged the little village. And at that time, the governor said, well, we ought to have a safety valve. And so he sent a, a team of builders across the, uh, across the bay and they built what they called Fort San Miguel, right about where Palafox Street would enter the, uh, the bay today. And that was the, the kind of the safety valve. And for the next 10 years, things went on as they had in the past. And then in 1752, still another hurricane came along and it literally wiped out the village on the island. And so at this point, the survivors of the, uh, the island village moved across and began putting together what we know as the downtown area of Pensacola today. They put together their, their buildings, they put together what they could. It was a very small group of people, uh, not well supplied. It was not a, a, a very a, a exciting place. We have no pictures of it, but basically that was the Pensacola that existed there for the next 11 years. Now, the story of the final Spanish days uh, kind of ties in with another, another war that is being fought at the same time. And when we return with the next episode of our story, we'll talk about how the British and the French were at war across the, much of the world and how that would come to impact what was going on here in Pensacola, even though Pensacola itself was not involved in that war at all. The Spanish who had come over here, they, they put together their, their little houses. Uh, they probably had a, uh, what made it, uh, what, what could be called a church. We know that they built what they called Government House. It was a, a central building for government affairs. And there was a British, uh, excuse me, a Spanish uh, military hospital and also a, British, a, a barracks for the soldiers. Basically, that's what we know about it. And that's where things stood when we came into the year 1763 here at Pensacola. Thank you.